Hey guys, welcome to another gg.co.uk video with me, Daryl Carter. This one is all going to be about eye catchers from the Cheltenham Festival that's just gone by. Uh, we're looking for horses that have a little bit of mileage in their handicap marks going forward for the new season. Perhaps novices that are going to be dropping into handicap company on their second season over hurdles or fences, etc. And just those that might have gone missed by the likes of the big players like the Racing Post and those sort of lists, etc. So it's not a list to follow, it's more of a Cheltenham eye catchers and under the right conditions, these horses should be winning off these sort of marks. Okay, so we're going to kick off. In, in the Supreme Novice Hurdle, uh, Edward Stone is the horse that really caught my eye. Finished sixth, was given plenty to do at the start of the race, was slowly away, weaved through the field, stayed, uh, put himself into a really promising position, turning into the home straight and just faded inside the final two flights. Now, that race was on soft ground. This is definitely a top of the ground horse. The quicker the ground, the better for him. He's a huge stamp of a horse, um, and I just really liked the run. I, I thought he did really well, considering the circumstances there. Back on better ground for Edward Stone this season, he's got a mark of 142. If he stays over hurdles, he is almost certainly going to be winning a handicap hurdle off that mark of 142. But he is a big, big stamp of a horse. So it wouldn't surprise me if connections do send him over fences. He looks pretty talented. He could be one to follow in the novice chase game should he jump extremely well. Uh, he jumps hurdles very nicely, so there's no reason why he shouldn't. But a mark of 142, should they exploit that hurdle mark um, or that or that uh, official handicap then uh, he's going to be definitely one to be interested on but on better ground or good good soft ground if he can find that this season he will be a player for sure uh, Cobra Demai was the other one that caught the eye he weaved through the field in the ultimate handicap chase again from an unpromising position he jumped slightly left throughout so you'd want to see him going forward on a left-handed track um, and that run again was on soft ground. He's one for eight on soft ground. He's down to his last minute mark, winning mark of 142. Again, another one that wants a little bit better ground. Good to soft, perhaps. Just soft, but not too tacky. Um, and a left-handed track. He has definitely got a big pot in him this season. I would be surprised if connections are not aiming him at one of the big handicaps going forward. That's Cobra Demai. Um, the next was in the Mayor's Hurdle. It was Elphile for Willie Mullins. Um, absolutely no match for Honeysuckle and Benny Dejure, but was very much in contention jump in the last flight. Um, this horse is going to be sent over, over fences. And I think the Yard do think a little bit of her, given the quotes that have been floating around about Elphile. She's likely to avoid Honeysuckle and Benny Dejure this term, but she's going to pick up a fair few races on the way over fences. There's no doubt about that. She looks like one that is definitely going to improve for a fence. So the third in the Mayor's Hurdle, Elphile, was very interesting. In the Northern Handicap Trust, the Novice Chase, um, you could honestly pick out about 10 in here that have probably got a little bit going forward. I picked out two. One of those was Michuka, travelled with extreme purpose uh, until the tank just emptied inside the home straight. Now, that was his first attempt at two and a half miles over fences. He's only been with his trainer for three runs, so I'm expecting plenty more to come from this horse, definitely when he drops back to two miles. He really travelled with purpose before just catching, I think, the second last, and then just sort of just sort of exposed that he doesn't really stay two and a half miles. So Machuca, back down to two miles, off a handicap mark of 136. I think he's got a win in him this season. Daily Tiger was the other horse that picked out from this race. He made up significant ground on the leaders. He was forced five wide around the bend in the turn into the home straight. Um, and that was actually his handicap debut over fences. He contested grade races prior to that earlier in the season. Uh, and he's on a mark of 139, which I thought was re really in reach for him on the basis of that performance. The handicapper has dropped in two pounds down to a mark of 137. And at between two and two and a half miles, Daily Tiger looks one to keep on side going forward. Okay, that rounds off the first day. The second day, um, it's going to be easy to suggest the likes of the big getaway who a lot of people think he's going to uh, take to a fence, but I didn't, I'm not really impressed by the way he jumped hurdles. So I'm just wondering whether or not he will be as good as everybody thinks he is going forward. I think easy work was definitely the one to take out on the Ballymore 
Um, this horse was up with a pace throughout the race and just outstayed by the magnificent Envoy Allen um, in the home straight. This horse jumps hurdles so precisely, so cleanly. It's really impressive. I think he's definitely going to take to a fence. He's on a handicap mark of 152. Um, he's better than that mark, that's for sure. I think he's going to be taking top rank in some of the... Um, some of the top novice chases at the festival next year, should he continue his progression. I would think that he'll probably be going towards the Mars chase, because um, I feel they're going to keep him, him and Envoy Allen separate. That would be a, the, the clever thing to do, and Envoy Allen's going to the RSA. It's just my opinion at the moment. Um, so easy work, the one to take out of the Ballymore for me. In the RSA, uh, I'll never forget Champ's ride or in the RSA. Uh, Champ, uh, Barry Gettys ride on Champ rather in the RSA. It was just incredible, absolutely incredible scenes. I do look in for the Gold Cup, but I'm very, very biased towards that horse. So it's very difficult for me to give you a, uh, an independent case on that horse, if you like. He's been sent to Henrietta, Henrietta Knight over the summer to improve his school in over fences. He does need to improve to win a Gold Cup, but... Love the horse to death. Give me one of my best moments in racing when we were celebrating champs, steaming up that hill. Just never forget that feeling. But there was one in the race to take out. It's a horse called I Right. Um, he was posted on the inside rail throughout on the worst of the ground when it was really tacky and really soft. Uh, and he travelled really well. He jumped poorly throughout the whole of the race. Um, but he was really able to mix it with the big boys um, in that particular race until he just blew up and just completely faded. Um, that was enough for me to suggest that a mark of 146, he is he is quite capable of that, of that mark once dropping him back into handicap company. Um, he's a winner of one of his three starts. He still could have more to come. Um, I right is definitely one to keep on the right side of. Um, there was no hiding place in the Coral Cup uh, on the front end. An honest Vic ran a, a, an excellent race to finish sixth. He was only bettered by black tears from his racing position um, throughout that race and the fractions that, that he clocked. Uh, I thought it was a really good run. He's improved last season for the fitting of the visor. He's given, been given a pound rise to a mark of 141. And I think that's underestimating the performance in the in the Coral Cup from Honest Vic. Uh, he's one of the more exposed types in this race. But I can see him um, coming out for a couple of spins with no visor and then perhaps the visor going back on just before Christmas time. Uh, he won last year at Kempton on Boxing Day. So it just might be the target again for, for connections um, with Honest Vic. So keep an eye out for the visor going on Honest Vic. Uh, Clemencia was the one that may have gone unnoticed in the Boodles. Um, he stuck on real game at the finish to finish fifth. That was... Um, uh, he was positioned again a lot more forward than many of the rivals that finished in front of him that day. Now, the race has not really worked out well at all, but he does look one to keep on side, Clemencia. It just, it just gave me the impression that there's plenty more to come. Real good attitude at the finish when, when staying on past beaten horses. Uh, I like that. I'd like to see him step up and trip, um, and Clemencia would be the one for me uh, in that race. Uh, Escaline was the other one. I wasn't sure whether to put Escaline in here or not. I, I thought he was a bit of an obvious one. Uh, he was left pl with plenty to do inside the home straight in the, in the champion bumper. He was last off the bridle. He found very little up the Cheltenham Hill, but he did a lot of running to get into contention, um, to get into the position he did. Uh, he remains one to follow. He's a former point-to-point. -point, uh, he's a six-year-old. I'm not entirely sure how connections are going to move with him, how quickly they're going to move with him. But he definitely looks like he's going to improve for an obstacle. Uh, just the way he strides out, it looks like he is made for hurdles and fences. Uh, Fernie Hallow was by far the best horse in that race, but I thought Escalane was one to take out of the race as well. So we'll just run through them again. I'll just list them off. That's Edward Stone, Cobra Demai, Elphile, Machuca, uh, Daily Tiger, Easy Work, a. Wright, Clemencia, Honest Vic and Escaline. Those would be the horses to take out the first two days for me going forward. And they've got plenty of movement in their handicap marks going forward. So those are the horses that are going to be in of interest to me from the Cheltenham Festival in day one. And day two.